Hi, my name is John Borhek, and I'm Chief Solutions Architect and CEO at VM Sources Virtualization. We'd like to take this opportunity to give you an early look at VMware vSphere 5. In this video, we're going to be building a virtual machine and then taking a look around the vSphere client to see what's new and different about vSphere 5. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we have to do is start the VMware vSphere client and connect to our ESX server. We're going to connect to our ESX server using its host name. That's because we've created A records for each of our ESX servers. If you don't have A records created in your domain, please just enter the IP address of your ESX server. When you're connecting to an ESX server, use the username root and the password you specified at install. What we're going to do first is just dive right in and build a virtual machine. So I'm going to right click on my ESX server over here on what we call the inventory panel and I'm going to select new virtual machine. We're going to use a custom build so we see what all of the different options are and we'll name our virtual machine server 2008 because we're going to build a Windows Server 2008 virtual machine. We're going to pick our data store. We see that we have a new virtual machine version available to us. Some of the primary advantages of virtual machine version 8 are that it enables 32-way virtual SMP. That means virtual machines can have simultaneous access to up to 32 CPUs. It also has support for up to one terabyte of virtual machine RAM. More importantly and more useful to most of us is that it also has USB 3.0 and Windows Aero support. We're going to select our operating system. We see a little bit of a difference here on this screen, by the way. We have Windows, Linux, and Other. That's a little simpler than it's been in previous versions. Windows all the way back to MS-DOS, Windows 3.1. That goes a long way back. Lots of flavors of Linux and listed in other we have a variety of operating systems which are also compatible with vSphere 5 most notably Mac OS X. We're going to go ahead and choose Microsoft Windows Server 2008 R264 bit because that's what we're going to build. Okay, We're going to set two CPUs because this is going to be a vCenter VM. We're going to set four gigs of RAM because this is going to be a vCenter VM but notice we can set all the way up to a terabyte of RAM right here on any virtual machine using virtual machine version 8. All right, We haven't set up networking yet so we're going to go with the default VM network and we're going to choose the network adapter that we'd like to build our virtual machine with. We have the same choices we've had before E1000, VMXNet2, and VMXNet3. LSI Logic SAS. I think we're going to go ahead and choose VMware Para Virtual SCSI adapter because it's going to perform better for us. We're going to create a new virtual disk. 40 gigs is fine. What we see here is not so much a new feature but a clarification in terminology. In the old days under ESX 3.x we used to format disks to a format known as eager zero thick at the command line for Microsoft cluster services. In ESX4, VMware simply said support clustering and fault tolerance. Now they actually use the proper term for this format, which is eager zeroed thick. The default format is going to work great for us, lazy zeroed. SCSI 0 colon 0. And finish. Our virtual machine at this point is just a container. There's no OS installed. When I build a virtual machine, I prefer to open a free-floating console window. In fact, I never use the console tab because it doesn't resize dynamically to whatever the operating system is doing. So I'm going to right click on my virtual machine and I'm going to choose open console and I'm going to get a virtual machine console window. I'm going to go ahead and power this virtual machine on and wait for it to boot up. What we're going to see is basically that there's no operating system installed. It is, however, necessary to power your virtual machine on before you can connect to a DVD ISO image. I'm going to connect to an ISO image on local disk. And in my ISOs folder, I'm going to locate my Windows Server installer ISO. And having now connected to that, I am going to 
send a Control-Alt-Delete to the virtual machine. This accomplishes a soft reboot and our Windows Server installation procedure can begin. One of the things you'll notice about virtual machines prior to installing the VMware tools is that your mouse is either out of the virtual machine remote console window or it's in the virtual machine remote console window and when it's in the remote console window it's stuck there and to release your cursor you have to press control alt. This is a kind of a look and feel that people need to get used to. It's also a fairly clunky mouse performance before you install the VMware tools. What I'd like to point out is this little underscore under the letter N. What that means is I can press Alt N to accept the values on that screen and not have to work with my mouse quite as much. Okay, we're going to choose Windows Server R2 Data Center Full. Alt N. We're going to accept the terms. Alt N and we're going to choose a custom install because there's no pre-existing installation of Windows this is really not a choice this is our only choice alright where do you want to install Windows you'll notice it hasn't found a disk that's because we've chosen to use the VMware Paravirtualized SCSI driver now we're going to release our cursor and select our floppy disk we're going to choose browse to a floppy image on a data store and in the folder VM images under a folder called floppies is where the VMware Paravirtualized SCSI drivers live PV SCSI Windows 2008 OK Okay, now we're going to choose next. And all of a sudden we see our 40 gig disk. We're going to choose next. And Windows is installing. Now we see Windows is finished installing and would like us to change our user's password. Let's go ahead and click inside the console. We'll select OK. We'll choose a password. And we'll confirm. And here we are at our completed Windows Server 2008 install. The first thing to do on completing any virtual machine build is install the VMware tools. As you can see, our mouse is still constrained to the virtual machine console. So I'll press Control Alt to release it. And I'm going to go up here to VM, Guest, Install slash Upgrade VMware Tools. Installing the VMware Tools package will greatly enhance the graphics and mouse performance in your virtual machine. Well, that's the understatement of the year. It installs memory drivers, time management, disk, all sorts of important stuff, not to mention the driver for the VMXNet 3 network adapter, which will let you attain 10 gig network speed within your virtual machine. We'll say OK here. The remote device on Server 2008 has been disconnected. That means we've been disconnected from our Windows installer ISO so that the VMware Tools ISO can be connected in its place. If your VMware Tools install doesn't begin on its own, Simply look in your My Computer and you can start the install from the DVD drive. As you can see our auto run has begun as expected and we're going to choose Run. The VMware Tools installer has hardly changed at all between vSphere 4 and vSphere 5. Typical install if you're running virtual machines only on vSphere 5 
complete install if you're going to run the same virtual machine on vSphere 5 and other versions and other VMware products. Custom install if you'd like to choose your own options. And the VMware Tools installation is complete. This concludes our video on building virtual machines under vSphere 5. Please watch our next video, Installing VMware vCenter 5. Thanks for watching. My name is John Borhek. I'm with VM Sources Virtualization.